Today, I'll be talking about nitrogen vacancy, or NV, centers in diamond and how they can be used as sensors. First off, what is an NV center? NV centers are point defects in the diamond lattice made up of a single nitrogen atom in a vacancy directly adjacent to the nitrogen. The nitrogen atom bonds to three carbon atoms, leaving a lone pair. Three electrons from dangling bonds from the carbon surrounding the lattice vacancy give a total of five electrons in the center. This leads to the neutral NV0 state, but it does not exhibit the same magneto-optic activity as the negative charge state, NV-, which has a six electron that is taken from the lattice. For this video, we will focus on the negative charge state as that is what practically all research into NV centers uses. Next, we need to understand how these nitrogen vacancy centers function. The center has a zero phonon line at 638 nanometers, which is the wavelength of a photon emitted by an electron directly moving from the excited state to the ground state. Both the ground and excited states are spin triplet, where the spin quantum number can be negative 1, 0, or 1, and so both the states are further divided into three sublevels. Due to the symmetry of the system, we see that the plus and minus 1 sublevels are degenerate and higher in energy than the 0 sublevel. There is also a metastable singlet, or spin quantum number of 0, state that assists in decay from the excited to ground state which leads to luminance sidebands that surround the zero phonon line from roughly 630 to 800 nanometers. Things become interesting with the NV center when a magnetic field is introduced. We see that the degenerate plus and minus one sublevels have now split in the magnetic field due to the Zeeman effect, with the amount of splitting directly proportional to the strength of the magnetic field. A common way to use NV centers to sense magnetic fields is through the use of Optically Detected Magnetic Resonance, or ODMR. Starting with a fluorescing center not in a magnetic field, a secondary microwave source is swept. When the microwave frequency is resonant with the energy difference between the zero and plus minus one sublevels, electrons will be excited from the zero sublevel to the plus minus one sublevel, which produces an optically detectable dip in fluorescence intensity. However, once the center is in a magnetic field, the plus minus one sublevels are no longer degenerate and there will be two ODMR dips corresponding to the zero minus one and zero plus one resonances. The frequency difference between these two dips allows the calculation of the magnetic field. Finally, what can NV centers be used for? This is, after all, a sensor physics video, so there must be some way to use these defect centers to actually sense the world around us. As discussed earlier, they can be used to simply measure magnetic fields, much like a Hall effect sensor, by determining the frequency difference between the two ODMR minima. However, there are a number of novel sensing applications where NV centers are showing promising results as a metrology tool. For example, researchers have been working on embedding nanodiamonds with single NV centers into cellular membranes. This works well as diamond has very low toxicity in the human body. Once embedded into a membrane, the nanodiamond is exposed to the voltage difference between the outside and inside of the cell. For a neuron, this potential is in the tens of millivolts, and given that the lipid bilayer of a cell is only several nanometers thick, this leads to an electric field on the level of 10 million volts per meter. Such a strong field would change the ODMR frequency by several megahertz, which would be easily measurable as discussed earlier in the video. This could be a boon for neuroscience researchers who wish to gather real-time data on neural activity. Lastly, NV centers could find use by being integrated into scanning probe microscopy techniques. The details of these microscopy techniques is beyond the scope of this video, but the general idea is that an NV center could be embedded into a tip that is very thin, less than 10 nanometers at the tip. By scanning this tip across a magnetic sample, the change in ODMR frequency readout would allow researchers to map with high spatial precision the magnetic field of some sample. Overall, it is clear that nitrogen vacancy centers are highly sensitive and stable and offer improvements in measurements for fields as various neuroscience and surface sciences.